Hello and welcome back to YouTube Guitar School. My name is Jörg. Please go and tune your guitar now. In lesson four for beginners, you will learn the following. The notes on a G string, the A7 chord, the E7 chord, the D7 chord and the B7 chord. We're gonna continue building on our blues progression by adding some palm muting and we're gonna improve our turnaround, the B turnaround. We're gonna learn a new song from the Beatles called I Wanna Hold Your Hand. And with this tune, you're gonna be able to utilize a lot of chords that you've already learned here. I've also included some links to Justin Guitar where you can take a strumming lesson as well as a forced chord lesson. If you're a beginner and new to this channel, I would suggest that you start with lesson one of YouTube Guitar School. Well, I guess you're all tuned up, so let's get started. In the last few lessons, we studied the notes on the E string and the notes on the A string. In this lesson, we're gonna focus on the D string. Notes on the D string, we start with the open D. After D comes E, full step, second fret is the E. After E comes F, half step, third fret is F. After F comes a full step to G, 5th fret. After G comes A, full step, 7th fret. After A comes B, full step, 9th fret. After B, only a half step to C, 10th fret. After C comes D on the 12th fret. Let's repeat that again. So we have D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. All right, so that's the notes on the D string. Again, that's very helpful for a variety of reasons, which you will find out very soon. So the notes in between, I'm just going to cover a couple just to explain to you. And we've done that in lesson one, but I'm just going to repeat that. Okay. So we have D and we set that a full step to E on the second fret. Now what's on that first fret? Well, it depends. That note has two names because it's below the D, it can be called a D sharp. And because it's above the E, it can be called an E flat. So D sharp or E flat. And that goes with all of the ones that are in between. If it's below, it's sharp. If it's above, it's flat. Okay? I hope that explains it a little bit. Later on when we do uh, bar chords, for example, so we know that fifth fret E string root note is A, that's the bar chord A. If we move a half step, because A, full step is B, in between we have, because we're above the B, it's a B flat, or because we're below the A, it's an A sharp. So there's two names for those in between notes. In this lesson, we'll add a few more chords, some seven chords. We're gonna add the A7, the E7, the D7, and the B7. So let's go have a look how to play those. So the A7 chord is basically D string, middle finger, second fret, and B string, ring finger, second fret. There's a relationship between A and A7. We're actually playing the G string open. We're not pressing that down, but we're also changing a uh, position, right? We're not gonna use the pinky anymore. We'll move the ring finger to the pinky. That's D7. A major, A 
A7. Do a few changes like that. Next one, we're going to look at E7. And E7 is middle finger, second fret A string, and index finger, first fret G string. It's kind of like a jazzy sound. Right? And again, if we put our ring finger on the D string second fret, we have our E major chord. So we just lift that ring finger and we have the E7. That's actually quite easy. It's easier than the A7 switch. So do that a few times until we get comfortable. Then we're going to do the D7. The D7 starts with the index finger, first fret on the B string. Uh, the middle finger, second fret G string. And the ring finger, second fret E string. So it's basically an inversion of the D string. We'll switch. So here we cover these two and we add the ring and we when we move up just slide the index finger here and then place those two there. That might be a little tough, but you'll get it. So that's the D7. Sounds pretty cool. The last one we're going to tackle today is the B7. And that's going to take all four of your fingers. So for the B7, we're going to first take the index finger, first fret, D string. We're going to take our middle finger, second fret, A string. We're taking our ring finger, put it on the G string, second fret. And we take our pinky and put it on the E string, second fret too. So all these three are on the second fret, always skipping one. And together that sounds like. Maybe switch it to. Do a little bit of switching so you get the feel of so where your fingers need to go. And then you could also do a little progression like this. So that's a little uh, progression you can practice. And what we did here, you just slide that whole chord, that B7 chord, down one step. And then you can start again. And so on and so on and so on. So you get used to those uh, seven chords a little bit.
Have you noticed the difference how we learned it in the last lesson? So we're going to add some palm muting and on the beat turnaround we're going to add an extra little note that we're going to put in there and that's going to help you stretch your fingers. So let's go check it out. Let's work on that blues progression from lesson three and add some cool stuff to it. So the first thing we're going to do is last week we played it like this. Okay, so today we're going to play it like that. So palm muting happens when you hit the strings, those two strings to, for that power chord, and when we hit them, immediately we mute them. Gives it a little bit of a choppy sound. Sort of that rock sound, that blues sound. Practice that, this chalk key. And of course there's different patterns with that too, but today we're just gonna straight palm mute every note that we play. So practice that. Okay, so the other thing we wanna enhance is the B section. Okay, the turnaround in B where we just played it plainly. What we're going to do today is we're actually going to hit with your index finger the sixth fret here on the D string. Then we go to A, back to The timing is all the same. It's just we're going to add this. That's going to be quite the stretch. Now, you can practice that somewhere else at the lower section of the neck where the distance is not so big, just to get your pinky used to that. Okay? And you don't need to force that up here. That might take a little while. So you want to make sure that your hand position, that you bring your arm close to the body and that's gonna set up your hand position to reach further. If you're up there too much, you won't, you won't be able to reach. So you have to kind of pull your arm in a little bit. And that is a stretch, and you could injure yourself, literally, right? You could overstretch and you'd be in pain for a few days. That's why I would suggest you do it down, just for practicing purpose. And then go up the neck, and as it gets wider, you stretch a little bit more. Let's practice that down here on G. And we know why this is G, because we studied the notes on the A string in lesson three. So here we are at G. We make that same power chord as up here, same shape. And we reach with the pinky a full step. And we do the palm muting still. And you work your way up the neck. And when it starts to hurt, you stop. And then the next day, you try this again, and you work way up, and eventually you'll be able to stretch up here. With this, that new blues will sound more like so that's just a quick short version of it but basically with the palm muting and with that nice turn around, it sounds a little bit better. Okay, in the next lesson, we're going to add some more cool stuff to this blues, such as an intro. And we're also going to add little nuances to, uh, to this playing. We can add that note, 
We can add this to it. So we're gonna add some cool stuff to it and then eventually you can sort of improvise yourself and make your own 12 bar blues progression. All right, so we have worked hard. Now it's time to learn a new song. I've included a link in my description to Justin Guitar. He's gonna show you how to play I Wanna Hold Your Hand by the Beatles. It's a fun song, it's cool to play, and above all, you're gonna be able to utilize many of the chords that you learned over the last few lessons. I have included two more links to Justin Guitar. One is on strumming, and one is on forced chord changes. So if you're struggling with strumming, that lesson might help you get better at it and be more precise. And if you're struggling between chord changes, the force chord changes is a great lesson for you to practice to get more accurate and faster and better at it. This concludes lesson four. Thanks for watching. We have some cool stuff planned for lesson five. We're gonna learn the G7 chord, the C7 chord, and the F7 chord. That's gonna conclude all the seven chords. And uh, of course, uh, another thing we wanna tackle is the B chord. The B chord will be your first bar chord that you're gonna learn. The B chord is an important chord to know because it's used in a lot of songs. So we're gonna tackle that one. It'll be your first bar chord. Besides that, we're gonna continue working on the blues progression. We're going to add a cool intro to that and we're going to add some various notes while we're playing it. You'll be able to sort of improvise your own blues progression. Thanks for watching again. I really appreciate it. Subscribe to my channel and I see you next time. Thank you.